gallery uh, in May, June 2022. And I've got a selection of some of the photos that are going to be in the show. And um, the theme of the show is street photography and the larger question of when is street photography a kind of surveillance? Is that a bad thing? How does that fit into the social media world, into the world of Facebook, hidden cameras, global surveillance? Is it wrong if somebody takes your picture without your permission? Just a general kind of meditation on how street photography fits into this world. Um, this photograph actually is one where uh, we, uh, well, Rudy Cavanagh, the photographer on the island, assembled about 300 Bowen Islanders on the front lawn of the library. And he was taking a picture from uh, Crow's Nest above, and I took some photos from a lower angle. And so this is actually a composite. And this is something I like to do in other large images of mine, where you're trying to encompass a whole street. So it's literally street photography. And in order to get a, a good composition with interesting portraits, I actually would run a series of sometimes hundreds of photos, and then in each direction select the best image, what I think is the best image. And this one you probably find interesting if you live on Bowen Island, because there are a lot of people here who you know, you may be in the photo yourself, so you can come down and take a look. One of the challenges with a photo like this, where everybody's packed in together, is that they're all moving in a mass, and so when you actually break it down and try to put it together, it's quite puzzled. If you look carefully, you'll find some interesting impossibilities in here. And this kind of goes to the fact that photography is very much about time. And this is, I call this series of photographs time warps because in effect, you are, you're playing with that element of time even though everything here is sharp. And in some of my other images, you'll see that I'm playing with time in a different way, where I'm using longer exposures that uh, reveal shapes and colors of how we actually present in the real world we don't see because we're not cameras and we see in a very particular way. As you enter the gallery, on your right, you'll be seeing all sharp images of people mostly in the streets. And on the left, you'll see images that are more colorful and, and more abstract, more like paintings. And these are the ones where I've taken longer uh, exposures of real people while moving with them as they move down the street or while walking down while they move through the image. And Originally, I started doing this as a way to anonymize people because I, I too feel a little bit uncomfortable taking shots of people, but they're just so interesting. It's a bit like wildlife photography. But in this case, what I'm trying to do is get a more universal image, shows us in our kind of four-dimensional state, but it also unlocks all these other effects in the camera, which I find quite beautiful. So if we take a look at this image, for example, um, I moved with the subject as she moved across uh, in front of an audience. It was in a parade in uh, Lucerne. And so all the, what otherwise are static colors are smeared. And so you get this lovely kind of painting look that I really enjoy. And then when you try to deconstruct it in your mind and you look carefully, you start to understand what some of these details mean. Usually in a photograph, you don't really have to interpret it, but for example, this sort of uh, pinkish area here, these are actually people's faces. And once you start looking, you'll see like stretched lips and stretched eyes and nose and mouth, and you get this really, for me, a really interesting abstraction of how we look in motion. We live in a time where everybody feels they understand relativity, speed of light, four-dimensionality, multi-dimensionality. And this is one way to kind of visualize how different the world is 
when you really think of it as a, a construct in time and not just a single crisp image. We're being photographed, and anytime there's a terrorist incident, immediately photographs come from 12 different angles revealing what happened in a particular place in a particular time. And we're kind of used to this now. Also, we have, uh, we've all been tourists, we take pictures of other people, and so this aspect of being on camera all the time is something we've gotten used to, until someone walks up to you and puts a camera in your face and you feel that invasion of privacy. And I'm not sure why we feel that, but we do. Part of the uh, fun of coming to the show will be that I have a couple of camera traps set up. And a camera trap is often something you use for wildlife photography. You have a sensor and a camera. And when an animal walks through a scene off at night, they trip that uh, sensor and the photograph is taken, even if the photographer isn't there. So we're going to have a couple of things going on in the show. One of them is just a regular surveillance camera, and you'll be able to see how the camera sees you, and it tracks you as you walk. And the other one is uh, an actual camera trap with a camera that's going to be on a slower shutter speed, and you're going to see what you look like in a slightly wider envelope of time. And you may see it like, uh, a bad photo that's out of focus. You may see it like a cloud. Um, you may think of it as a four-dimensional image of a person. So you'll be able to walk through and automatically have these images taken as you go. You don't have to, um, and you know if you don't want your image taken, uh, you won't need to worry about that. Uh, the surveillance camera will be going, but we're not recording, it, so it's just an experience to sort of feel the presence of cameras that we kind of get used to in daily life. My uh, paid work is as a graphic designer and uh, digital designer, so I build websites, I do graphics, I uh, do photography and uh, public uh, uh, consultation, a variety of things like that. Um, so this image is more about my photography than an individual snapshot. And what I'm trying to show here is a flow between you know, historical photography, different movements in photography and modern art, and how they dovetail with what emerges in the photography that I do. So uh, while some of the photos that I take just look like, as I was saying, bad images that were, are blurry, in fact, they're, they're related to other movements in art, such as uh, color field uh, painting and this sort of thing. So what I've done in this image, though, is I have no glass, and I'm encouraging people to actually touch the surface, because I think we sometimes view photography as this abstract, distant thing, and when we come into galleries, the glass is separating us from these delicate images. And this one, I just like the feeling of the texture, and what I'm encouraging people to try out is just to take a clean, dry finger and just make their own path and just sort of think about the transitions from one type of image to another. Uh, some of them are historical photographs, uh, photos of war and mob activity, photos of uh, women and children in poverty-stricken times, uh, art movements like futurism and abstractions. And the ones that are surrounded in the white border are my photographs, and the ones that are surrounded in the gray border are historical photographs or pieces of art. So from here over is all work that I do. 